cup of tea. I'm enjoying this far too much. So hello fellow engineers, we're back in Engitopia, looking at the grade separated junks from last time. Still a bit dodgy looking, but thankfully in the comments last time I had loads of suggestions for different mods to try to make the building process a little bit easier. So I've got those installed. This episode we're going to build a new sort of intersection down there. So obviously we've got our industrial bit down here and at the moment all of our traffic is coming through here. You can see it's starting to back up already. So what I thought we'd do, we'd go and build a new junction here. I'll do like a little basic junction design, how we do it in the real life, and we'll tie it onto this industrial area just so they have like a quick way to the motorway without going through with our residential area. So let's get started then. After I finish my tea. Ah, lovely jubbly. Right, so highway design. Where do we start? <laughs> I guess we could start by going back to this one. So in the UK, this is sort of a standard junction layout. Uh, it's not ideal because obviously you come off the road and then you got to slow down, then need to give way or there might be traffic lights or something. So not very good. But if you look at more recently developed countries, like especially like the Middle East, etc., where they're not too limited on space, uh, you'll notice their junctions seem to be a bit more like this. So on this junction, you've got literally any direction you want to turn. You can do so while maintaining the speed of the motorway. Like you don't have to slow down to give way or let anyone else out. So I'm going to pause the game. And then we're going to build up here. Whoa, like the rain stops. Whoa, that's cool. Why is that so cool? Oh, I can still hear the rain. It's making me need a waz. Right, I'm actually going to be a bit cheeky here. I'm just going to fill in this lake a bit. Right, so essentially we're going to start with this side of the road. So. This traffic is all going that way. So if we want them to go down there, we're going to need a junction. What one do we need to use? Highway ramp. Aha! <laughs> I love that. Look at this. Normal tweeting bird. Fine road anarchy tweeting bird. <laughs> <laughs> That's so aggressive. But yeah, this means the mod is on, I think. So I think essentially that means I now have loads of notes. If I turn that off. No, not really sure what that means. But hopefully as we start making stuff, it should be clearer. All right, so we need a way of getting these people onto this side of the road. And the sort of best thing to do here, in my opinion, would be to go from about there. We have a junction. And we're going to do a big curve all the way around. Oh, jeez, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> yes, that's better. <laughs> not the roller coaster loop, just a simple uphill grade. And then straight over, and then we start going down. Okay, that's good. And that should give us space on this side to get this side of the road under the bridge, should we need to. So if we're coming back then onto this side of the road, I want to do something similar. So we're literally going to start from the same spot. Why do you want to do this to me? <laughs> I literally don't understand this game. <laughs> How is that what you think I want to do? It's like invalid shape. No shit. Freaking game. People wonder why I haven't done a video on this for a long time. <laughs> this is why. What What are you doing? We're going to have to do that, which looks, no, I guess, not too bad. So straight over to there and then back down. Oh, this side's fine. That side is annoyingly unsymmetrical. So essentially, we want to sort of mirror this. So rather than coming off, we go around here and back onto the road. Oh dear, we've got lumps. We've got lumps again. <laughs> Let's undo whatever I did. Essentially, the mover mod is useless for roads, I think. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's how it works. So we're just going to have to have it look in not too realistic. But at least I can talk through how things should work. <laughs> right, so let's go over some basics of what I've done here. So essentially, when you design junctions, you want to minimize structures. So as few structures as possible is always best if you're trying to save money because structures are super expensive. So you want to sort of reduce the span and the span is like the distance between pillars. So you want to get that as short as possible. What you probably would do here is you'd build these banks up because you've got no need for everything under here. So you'd probably take some dirt that you've got somewhere else, bung it underneath so that your structure actually starts 
here. So I wonder if I can do that. Can I sort of landscape? It might be too late now. Yeah, so our bridge would actually look more like that. So this wouldn't be structure. This would just be normal road. And then your structure would start here. You'd probably have some pillars in the middle because that would make two short spans rather than one really long one. So obviously if it's really long, the beam or whatever's inside that block of concrete has to be really strong. And then over this side would have the same. So I'll just build that up. And so obviously if you're if you're filling this land, so if this land isn't naturally a hill like this and you're building up yourself, you'd have to like measure what the soil's like, so how strong it is, how cohesive it is. And basically that would tell you like how steep it can be. Because if it's too steep, then it'll just collapse under itself. And obviously if it's too flat, you have to use more and more. There's no such thing as too flat, really. If you had loads of extra like soil left over from like a cutting you did somewhere else, then uh, you'd make these nice and flat and sort of blend it all in. But this is more of a typical highway. And you never want to bring in soil from somewhere else. You always really want to use material that you have on site because imported fill is very expensive. And basically it's just a balancing act between what's more expensive. Is it the length of the bridge or is it bringing in material? So have a little thing. If one of these lorries was filled with dirt, say, how many of them you'd need to fill this in? Yes, yeah, so can I copy this, I wonder? Is there a duplicate? Control C. Aha. Uh -huh. So we can make this a bit more realistic. So we can do our short spans. So just by doing that, we've half the span. And I should probably bung one there and there. Right, so you might be asking, how the hell did I design this? Like, how did I choose how round it should be? All that sort of stuff. So generally, these layouts, they're all based on the traffic flows, like the anticipated traffic flows. So essentially, they measure, like, how many vehicles are going along a road and then program in, like, if we were to have a new area down here that everyone wants to go to, what proportion of traffic will come down, all that sort of stuff. All the boring stuff, it's not real engineering. Sorry, traffic modelers. But uh, so that will give us, if we look in our standard guidance, that will give us what sort of layout we should use, like especially for these slip roads on and off. Because you know, we got we got all sorts of different slip roads. But then we need to design like the angles, the sort of the radii, these curves, all that sort of stuff. And that's all based on like the speed limit. So obviously on a motorway in the UK, 70 mile an hour is national speed limit. On a junction like this, you'd ideally want to keep this 70 miles an hour if we can. So we'd do our taper, and the taper is like the angle that the road comes off at. And it would be at an angle a lot shorter than that. <laughs> this is like 90 degree bend pretty much. But as I said, not too clued up on this game and how to make it work. But imagine that's a bit nicer. You then come along here. We then have a bend. And basically we have a table in our highway standards document. In the UK, that's the DMRB, the Design Manual for Roads and Bridges. And uh, essentially it's like a big list of different speed limits. And then it will give you, for each speed limit, what radius you can use, depending on the fall of the road. So obviously if, as we're coming around this road, if it was completely flat, you'd kind of need it to be quite a large radius. So rather than curving down that way, it'd have to be a lot bigger. So you'd have to go over there. So what do I mean by that? So from above, so rather than doing what it's doing there, it'd have to be a lot smoother curve like that. Whereas if we were to angle this road, so it points inwards. So as you're driving down this, your car's leaning to the right. It's kind of like a banked corner, like thing like NASCAR or something like that. So as that happens, the more your angle is, the steeper you can make this radius with it still being safe. And in the UK, the max you can do really is about 7%. So if you have a 7% gradient, so this is the high side of the road, this is the low side of the road, quite a banked corner. You look in your table and it will tell you what radius you can have. And the radius is just measured as, well, it kind of is a circle. Imagine it's completely circular. So radius would just be the distance from there to the center of your circle. So obviously the flatter that your fall is, and we call this the cross fall, the fall along the cross section. So the steeper that is, the tighter your radius can be, the flatter it is, the bigger your radius has to be. And the key is just to keep people at 70 miles an hour if they can. So yeah, essentially, we would just do our radius from this point all the way around to this point. But you'll notice there's a straight here and a curve here. And you don't really want, especially if you're going at 70 miles an hour, you don't literally want to go from a curve 
bang onto a street. So you actually have something between them called a transition. A transition, sometimes are called spirals, but essentially a transition, it's just a constantly changing radius. So obviously the radius of a straight line is infinity, like it doesn't have one. Like if you were to draw a straight line as a circle, the circle would never finish. But then obviously if you come around here, your center point is there. So your radius of this curve is whatever distance that is. We'll call it 10 or X, I don't know. And then if you were to take that bit, and draw that as a circle, it would be huge. It would be like, well, somewhere around there. So your radius would be way bigger. And that just shows that there's a transition because your radius is going from that length to this massive length. So it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger until you hit the straight. So that would be a horizontal transition. You also have a transition for your cross section. So obviously as you're driving down the road, there will be some cross fall. And as I mentioned in my previous video, the drainage one, we always have cross fall on a road and that's to get the rainwater off the carriageway. They tend to come down to the outside of the road. So as rain, say it lands there, it will fall along this way into some sort of drainage system down there. So obviously that's not very steep. You come onto here, you've actually got a left hand turn first. So it's more likely than not that the low side of the road would be this side. So cross fall would be going from high side this side to low side that side. And then it would switch over here to high side that side, low side this side, which means along the middle, you'd have like a transition. And the idea, it's sort of, is kind of to make your car act like a roller coaster. Like it's not quite that exaggerated, but it wants to follow the road. So the idea is to make the road keep the car on the carriageway. So it almost makes it turn without having to turn. So you'll come off here, you're leaning left to make you go around a left hand turn. And then it swaps over the road this is to make you lean right. So you go right around here. And then as we come towards a straight, it will slowly go from really steep around here where it's a steep corner to just a semi-flat cross fall. And obviously there'll still be some, even though it's a flat road for the drainage. And then all while that's going on, you need to think about the vertical alignment. But let's do some more building for now. All right, so if you were driving down this road and you want to get down there, the easiest way to do it and we completely avoid structures, is literally just do a curve from here down to there. So we'll do that quickly. All right, so now we have an off, which is just flat. And we want to keep it flat. We want to avoid using bridges, remember? Keep it cheap. So we've got a nice little off there. A nice little on there. That one's a bit funky. <laughs> if we're doing this in the real life, you'd minimize the amount of turns you have. But uh, that, that will do for now. All right, so obviously we wouldn't want boulders in our road. So we'd get rid of those. And especially in the middle of our road, that would not be the standard. <laughs> we'll get rid of those. I think we'll just keep going along, clearing everything. Because people said it helps the frame rate of this game as well. You delete everything in the road's path. I remember actually as a kid, <laughs> there's this uh, Thunderbirds episode, if anyone's ever watched Thunderbirds, of how roads are made. And I honestly thought it was how roads are made. So I'll try and get a clip of it up. Hopefully it won't get copyrighted. But it's just this huge machine that like shoots trees and rocks and stuff out in front. <laughs> and then shits out a road behind it. But yeah, I honestly thought that was how roads are made. So what I'm going to do here, just in case people come off this junction and they didn't really mean to, I'm going to add a roundabout so that people have the option to turn around and come back if needed. So no idea how to build a circle, if I'm honest. Right, so now we have our roundabout. And we connect this up. Yes. Yes. Okay, that's good. Essentially, you'll come off here. Let's have a look. I think we should do some lane connection stuff. All right, so we probably want to fix these. So you go straight ahead. You go straight ahead. You go straight ahead. And you go that way. I'm right, not going to stay on that mod too long because it's a bit scary. I don't really know what I'm doing. But right, so this is our sort of motorway bit. And then we're gonna have down here, down to our industrial area, just a normal road. So we want probably a medium road, four lane with decorative trees. Actually, as it's industrial, maybe we'll keep this one. So a four lane road. All right, and essentially I sort of wanna continue this area and connect it all up. All right, so we're at a junction, just across there probably. All right, we need some of this industrial zone demand. So we will keep painting these. And I think, was it that one? Large brush. That's it. So we'll paint all this up. I think I want to keep the old commercial zones down the side. And now I've noticed we've got high density commercial zones and office zones. Ooh. So if you remember from a few episodes ago, I wanted to make this my office area. So I will add that all in now. So this is our very first office zone. So I'm going to rename this after a Patreon. 
Alright, so who has a commercial type name? I reckon Urk Plaza or Plaza if you're posh. Alright, so this road here, it could be the key to my sissy. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a good road. I'm gonna I'm gonna call this blockchain way. We're gonna put an incineration plant in here. Bang in the middle. And you are a very lucky person, blockchain. <laughs> and we can finally start telling garbage people empty to there. We don't want landfill anymore. Landfill is old school. So it's empty, empty, empty. I might actually build another one right next to it just to make it easier. Maybe another one there. All right, so we're literally going to make this area just the everything area. It's got a hospital where the elderly go to die. It's where the children go to die. We've got bouncy castles so people can go to hospital. Well, <laughs> can you imagine if that was the case? <laughs> Massive hospital and a bounce castle on its own. All right, we do actually need a police station up here. So I will bung one in and probably a fire place. We're going to have a carousel park right there. Right, and then apart from those, we're just going to fill the area with roads. And then I think it's going to be like a sort of commercial, commercially area. The thing with these sort of local roads, the speed are a lot lower. So you can make them go around steeper corners like that. Well, not quite like that. That's... <laughs> That's a bit shit. We can certainly make them do that sort of shape and stuff. And obviously we won't want to put junctions on the inside of a bend. Try and do it from down here. Right, do we have any car parks? Is car parks a thing? Not really. But anyway, we're going to do high density commercial. Because we haven't got any of that yet. So, oh, look at this. Look at this. Fill it all in. Whoop. Right, so if I press play and let that build. I think what we need to do, we need to take this industrial zone and make it its own district. And which lucky Patreon is going to get the industrial zone? <laughs> Don't all fight. Don't fight over it. I know it's a very popular one. So no, this is not Birch Heights. This is actually Arrowleaf Avenue. <laughs> I am sorry, Arrowleaf. <laughs> you knew it was coming, though. You knew it was coming. He's my mod from Discord. He loves it. Ah, oh, yes, of course. I forgot to build the pipes up here. So yes, I forgot to do the drainage, which being a drainage engineer is understandable, right? So obviously as before we want to keep them all under the road if we can and the hospital definitely needs drainage all right so our new high density commercial zone that also needs to be a district and who's gonna get this one the main road has already been named blockchain way emerson park no chance this is the lewis shore mountain ironic because it's flat so yes now we have access along this road for all of our commercial traffic and while we're up here, we can just talk through the final piece of the pie of highway design. When I say highway design, it's more just alignment design. So alignment is like designing, like drawing them almost. So doing all the curves, where they go, all that sort of stuff. So you've also got pavement design, which is sort of the thickness of the road. So obviously depending on the ground underneath and the amount of traffic they're expecting. It's not just the amount of traffic, it's also the amount of HGVs. So obviously this road, because it's all from our commercial zone, it's all going to be heavily trafficked by HGVs. Why are you just pushing that one along? <laughs> Whoa, they nearly tipped over. That nearly tipped over. Yeah, so because this is highly trafficked by lorries, etc. This road would actually be thicker than most other roads. And actually in the UK, we call these trunk roads. The main route for like cargo and lorries, etc. But, uh, but yeah, that, that's something different. Stop. To, right, I'm going to have to sort this out with this mod. Because you're all cutting each other up. So you only go into that lane. Everyone else goes straight ahead. Oh my god, that guy just cut across the verge. Right, okay. So we've got both of those set up. That should be all right now. So as I said before, we're going to look at the vertical design just quickly. It's obviously like a flat road. We call this the horizontal design. On the horizontal plane, choosing where the road goes, bends and stuff. But the vertical design is if you were to look a longer road like this one this bridge so can you see it starts down here flat and then it, there's actually a curve there and then it's got a straight gradient up to here and that's another curve there so this is what we mean by vertical design so you, obviously ramps can't be too steep so otherwise cars can't drive up them going from a flat to a ramp needs a curve obviously that curve that has a radius so if you were to draw like a circle there that would be a radius which gives you that curve. Same for these ones. They're called, this is called a sag, like a low point in a road. And this is called a hog. 
Basically, it's just like the direction of the circle or of the curve. So they both have their own different values for radiuses and there's like K values and all, there's all sorts. I won't go into that much detail, it's really boring. And again, they're all based on the speed of the road, number of cars, that sort of stuff. But also what the horizontal is doing. So obviously, if you have a really sharp bend, you probably don't want that to start just midway through it, just ramp up into the air. So you, when you're designing roads, you have to look at the combination of what the horizontal is doing what the vertical is doing, what the crossfall is doing, all of that sort of stuff to make it all work. So if you were just to zoom out and get a full picture of this junction, this is the most efficient junction design that there is. I, I looked through all of them that I could find, and this is by far the best shape. It's, uh, it's similar to the strongest shape in Polybridge as well, actually, but I think that might just be a coincidence. This was purely based on traffic flows and limiting the number of structures. But yes, anyway, so Engitopia, we're now getting there. We have access to our, our new Lewis Shore Mountain, the commercial dream. I probably shouldn't have put that in the middle, should I? I might actually move that. Yeah, I'm actually gonna move that. That's stupid being there. Let's move you down to here. Cause look, I've just pulled, look at those trees. I killed the trees. All these garbage trucks, like, oops. Uh, no one seems to be using the hospital. So that's a good sign, right? All right, hopefully the trees will grow back. I'm not really sure if that is a thing, but we shall see. It's quite a productive day. We did a brand new junction leading to our new high density commercial zone and state of the art hospital. And then we added some incineration plants. We'll get rid of those stinking old landfills. But yeah, I think while we're here as well, we should just have a little look to see how our Poo River's doing. <laughs> yeah, our Poo River literally goes for miles and miles. Oops. But I uh, hope you enjoyed that, guys. That was a little brief look at highway design. Until the next Engitopia, guys. Peace, love, and bridges. Two bridges side by side. Cheers, guys. Bye.